Dear friends, welcome to the channel The Eastern Front. The device for silent and invisible firing Brahmid was developed shortly before the beginning of the Great Patriotic War. With the beginning of hostilities, the Brahmids were armed primarily with sabotage in partisan detachments operating behind the enemy lines. Documents on this development throughout the war were classified as top secret. When did the top secret Soviet device cease to be such for the enemy? Despite all the secrecy surrounding the Brahmid in the Soviet Union, soon after the outbreak of the war, it fell into the hands of the Finns and Germans as a trophy. The German Infantry Weapons Handbook describes a Soviet captured silencer which was assigned to the designation Schalldämpfer 254. A Mosin rifle with a silencer in the same sources is called nothing else than Partisanengewehr, partisan rifle. These descriptions were compiled on 1 June 1942, but even earlier in the Finnish Infantry Ammunition Manual, dated 20 February 1942, it says about the special ammunition and a silencer for the Mosin rifle. Already in April of the same year, the Finns launched into mass production a copy of the Soviet silencer Brahmid. It's clear that the secret device fell into the hands of the enemy even earlier, but the circumstances of this event were not reliably known for a long time. Not so long ago, the Soviet documents appeared in the public, which are translation from the German of captured rear documents that fell into the hands of the Soviet specialist in May 1942. From one such German order, it becomes clear that already in early October 1941, the enemy knew that Russians, especially partisans, used rifles with the silencers. The Germans were also aware of the construction of this device. A sleeve inside which there are two rubber plugs located one after the other. And about the marking cartridges, special ammunition bullets of which are painted green. In the first month of the fighting, the partisan movement was only gaining momentum and was rather disorganized. To activate the anti-fascist resistance behind the enemy lines, a training center was established in July 1941. At the same time, the similar partisan schools began to open in many frontline cities under the leadership of local party workers. The troops of the special group of the NKVD of the USSR were also formed, where reconnaissance and sabotage groups were also trained. The cadets studied sabotage equipment, partisan tactics, and the main purpose of sabotage activities was called blowing up bridges, destroying military depots and attacking columns. There was also training in rifle shooting with a special armor piercing cartridges, silent device Brahmid, the device of Diakonov grenade launchers, which were supposed to be three for each compartment, was studied. Subsequently, on the basis of many such sabotage groups, partisan detachments began to form in the Belarusian forests. Despite the widespread popularity of sound jamming devices, it was Soviet intelligence offices in partisans who were the first to massively use them to perform special tasks. At the beginning of August 1941, near Moscow, a group of future saboteurs successfully completed 10-day courses at one of the partisan training schools. Before being sent to the enemy rear, the graduates were addressed by high general's rank, who announced that they were being handed weapons about the existence of which neither the generals nor the officers and not a single Red Army soldier at the front know anything. Moreover, the saboteurs should rather let themselves be shot than tell the enemy anything about this weapon and in no case give it to the enemy. The weapons of the sabotage group were something like this. Three people with submachine guns. Seven people had rifles with the silencers. Each had a revolver. Six fragmentation hand grenades. 300 special and 180 incendiary cartridges. In order for the group to be divided into two squads, it had two commanders, four soldiers and four civilians. One of these groups was abandoned in the area of the city of Polotsk, Witebsk region. 
Probably this group allowed itself to be discovered 10 km from Polotsk North, as it should be in such situation, in order to avoid falling into the hands of the enemy, the Brahmi devices, along with the rest of the weapons, were buried in a swampy forest. Further events followed an unforeseen scenario. The entire partisan group, with the exception of the commander, surrendered, and one of the prisoners of war, in gratitude for his good treatment, volunteered to testify about the training of partisans and silent weapons of a new model. Perhaps it was from his testimony that the enemy first learned about the secret weapons of the partisans. Later in June 1942, the interrogation documents were seized by the partisans. The prisoner also claimed that with a silencer mounted, only special ammunition can be used, because when using other ammunition, the robber's leaf is destroyed by the first shot, and when firing special ammunition, the robber's leaves must withstand 100 shots. Immediately at the division headquarters, ammunition and silencer were tested. It's noted that when the shot was fired, only the strike of the striker and a quiet hissing sound were heard. After that, the divisional headquarters sent the superiors and separate package one silencer, two spare rubber bushings and 76 charge of special ammunition. Despite these unsuccessful operations behind the enemy lines, which entailed serious negative consequences, the use of such special weapons by the partisans was extremely successful. So, one of the representatives of the central headquarters of the partisan movement in July 1942 reported from the Bransk forest to his leadership. Send devices for the silent shooting to machine guns, PPD and PPSH submachine guns, as well as cartridges for them. The effect of them here is huge. The railway section is completely cleared of security for 2-3 hours. Therefore, delay action mines and Brahmi device are very, very necessary here. And the partisans were indeed sent silences. So, by July 1943, the wire houses of the Belarusian headquarters of the partisan movement received more than 3,000 Brahmi devices, almost 40,000 robot obturators, over 1,200,000 special cartridges. Silences were not only for rifles, but also for revolvers. There was practically no separate accounting of rifle and revolver Brahmids, so it's not yet possible to find out how many partisans had rare pistol silencers. Little is known about the production of Brahmids before the outbreak of the war and in its early years. At least 5,000 such devices were produced in the besieged Leningrad in 1941, while mass production was launched only in May 1942. From May to July, 50,000 silencers were planned to be produced at two defense plants. However, until December 1942, the Tula Arms factory produced a little more than 50,000 pieces and then stopped production. From the second quarter of the 1943, the production plan for Brahmids was sharply reduced to only 500 units per month. Now it can be stated with confidence that the device Brahmid was the most massive silencer of that time. Later, the Red Army adopted a SGDP silencer for a DP machine gun of a similar design which was also intended to supply partisan detachments. Silent PPD Brahmid submachine guns designed for special units of the Red Army in partisan detachments were also tested. Moreover, in 1942, the workshops for repairing damaged weapons began to appear in the partisan detachments of Belarusia. Soon, the forest gunsmith mastered copying factory samples of PPD and PPSH submachine guns. And since 1943, they have already created their own unique weapon designs. A video about an unknown weapon of victory was recently released on my channel. Who hasn't seen it yet, I recommend it for viewing. Dear friends, that's all for today. It was Team and the Eastern Front channel. Perhaps someone knows what silences the Allies had in service with the weapons. Write please in the comments.
And as usual, I wish you peace and health. See you.